Vasily Emelianenko was nervous. His entire unit of rugged Ilyushin IL-2 Stromovic ground attack aircraft had just decimated a German-controlled airfield in eastern Ukraine. The Stormbirds had swiftly risen from the hills and rained hell on two rows of Luftwaffe aircraft. Despite the low altitude at which they were flying, German machine gun fire did little damage to the Stromovic's armor. However, a few moments later, one lucky shot made its way to Emelianenko's engine, and his aircraft barely reached the tall pines surrounding the enemy airfield. With oil pressure rapidly plummeting to zero, Emelianenko headed toward Soviet lines while German fighters were relentlessly chasing him. His Stromovic then made a hard landing in open terrain, and the young pilot now had to run into the woods before a German sniper picked him up. It was thanks to the outstanding resilience of the Stromovic, whose entire fuselage was made from pure steel armor, that Emelianenko survived. But it was just the beginning of the aircraft's career, as it went on to play a crucial role in the brutal Battle of Kursk. A flying tank. In the 1920s and 1930s, Europe and the United States embarked on a joint effort to develop a new type of aircraft that could provide ground support to friendly infantry and tanks. During this time, the Soviet Union began experimenting with the idea of a dedicated ground attack aircraft with enough armor to withstand combat at low altitudes when providing support fire. The premise behind the Stromovic warplanes was to field a flying tank that combined firepower, armor protection, and performance to neutralize unarmored and armored ground targets. As a so-called flying tank, the aircraft was designed to absorb intense ground-based fire first and enemy aircraft fire second. Nevertheless, the Red Army's attempts to develop the vehicle were unsuccessful. Designer Nikolai Polikarpov then came up with the R5SH Stromovic and other aircraft that got close to what the Soviets required. As such, they were used during the Spanish Civil War of 1936 and the Battle of Kulk and Gol against the Japanese in 1939. It was soon evident that the aircraft lacked engine power and sufficient armor to protect the pilots as intended. However, it all changed when Sergei Vladimirovich Ilyushin and his team from the Ilyushin Aircraft Design Bureau came up with a unique design that finally convinced Soviet leader Joseph Stalin. Ilyushin IL Stromovic. During the last months of 1938, Sergei Ilyushin suggested the idea of an authentic flying tank and asked Stalin to allow his bureau to develop it. The idea behind Ilyushin's design was to replace armor plates, which were too heavy and difficult to work with, and instead structure the entire fuselage from pure steel armor. Stalin was pleased and allowed Ilyushin to go forward without having to compete with anyone. Two prototypes were ordered. They were single-engine, low-wing monoplanes, driven by a propeller and powered by a Mikulin AM35 engine, which provided over 1,350 horsepower. These engines would later be replaced with more powerful ones. Their most notable feature was the inclusion of the armor in an airframe load-bearing scheme. The armored hull of riveted homogeneous armor steel protected the cockpit, engine, fuel tanks, and oil radiators. The prototypes were initially conceived as single-seaters, but were reconfigured as two-seaters once the Third Reich invaded the Soviet Union and a gunner was deemed necessary to fend off hostile Luftwaffe aircraft. The first flight tests took place in October of 1939, one month after the Soviet-German invasion and occupation of Poland. Stalin and the Stavka were pleased with the aircraft, and it passed factory trials in 1940. Nevertheless, Ilyushin kept working to improve the design before mass production. The Ilyushin IL-2 Stromovic was armed with five 7.62mm machine guns, one of which was used for defense, and two 23mm cannons. In addition, the fuselage was tapered at the tail, where a single vertical fin was affixed, along with low-set horizontal planes with rounded tips. Both crewmen were seated back to back, and the engine compartment resulted in a long nose section where the cockpit had to be placed closer to midships. Eventually, the modifications to the glazing in which the rear gunner was seated led to the nickname of the Hunchback. The Concrete Plane 
The Ilyushin I.L. Stromovic, or Hunchback, entered production in March of 1941 as rumors of an invasion of the Soviet Union by German forces began to spread across Europe. By the time Adolf Hitler launched Operation Barbarossa on June 22, 1941, over 250 Hunchbacks had been produced, but very few were delivered to Soviet Air Force units close to the regions where the Axis attacked. Moreover, they were swiftly destroyed by the Luftwaffe because of the scarce training the Soviet pilots received. Even so, on June 21st, the 4th SHAP, or Ground Attack Regiment of the Soviet Air Force, conducted its first coordinated assault against a column of German panzers and mechanized infantry. Ensuing attacks were successful, but by the end of the summer, most Stromovics were already destroyed, and production had to be ramped up. This initially proved difficult, as the entire Soviet industry had to be relocated beyond the Ural Mountains. As a result, the quality of the aircraft delivered between 1941 and 1942 varied significantly. Some had full metal fuselages and wings, but others were made with wood. Stalin was furious and sent a telegram to the directors of several IL-2 plants. He wrote, quote, You have let down our country and our Red Army. You have the nerve not to manufacture IL-2s until now. Our Red Army now needs IL-2 aircraft, like the air it breathes, like the bread it eats. This plant now produces one IL-2 a day. It is a mockery of the Red Army. I ask you not to try the government's patience, and demand that you manufacture more IL-2s. This is my final warning. Production increased dramatically in the following years, and over 36,000 Stromoviks would be produced by the end of the war. The Slaughterer The two-seater Stromoviks were fitted with additional protective armor, two 37mm cannons, and AM-38F engines that provided over 1750 horsepower. This variant quickly displaced the one-seater, as the Germans promptly exploited the disadvantage of lacking a rear gunner. Luftwaffe aircraft tended to attack the Soviet aircraft from above and behind to overwhelm them rapidly. In June of 1942, pilot Vasily Emelianenko and his squad of Stromoviks were dispatched to a German airfield near Artemovsk in eastern Ukraine to destroy as many enemy aircraft as possible. They were flying low in a ravine to avoid detection, and once the enemy airfield was spotted, the Stromoviks lined up in battle formation, going straight for the parked Luftwaffe aircraft. Emelianenko and his crew immediately fired their rockets and lined up their cannon shots as they passed over the rows of German warplanes. Soon, the Germans retaliated with machine gun fire, but the Stromoviks' rugged armor proved it could withstand the damage. Even so, the Soviet aircraft kept engaging the airfield until the Germans could take their aircraft to the skies. Stromovic pilot and hero of the Soviet Union, Valentin Averyanov, wrote in his memoirs that, quote, Despite the fact that the armor offered no protection from 20mm anti-aircraft rounds and aircraft guns, it still deflected many types of munitions. The Stromovic's heavy armor would eventually lead the Germans to call the aircraft the Bettenflugzeug, or concrete plane. Wreaking Havoc Such scenes were not uncommon, and they increased as the war's tide changed. During the last days of the Battle of Stalingrad, two Stromoviks, armed to the teeth, wreaked havoc in the train station at Malorosiskaya, the Tikoretsk region. The two hunchbacks destroyed four trains, leading to countless German casualties and valuable losses of fuel, ammunition, and other supplies for the Axis forces. The Ilyushin IL-2 was finally proving its worth as a ground attack aircraft. In combination with its 7.62mm machine guns, 37mm cannons, and bomb load of over 1,300 pounds, the Stromovic had no trouble tearing apart German Panzer III's and even Panthers. The introduction of anti-tank bomblets, or PTABs, further enhanced the anti-tank capabilities of the Stromovic, as these small 5-pound armor-piercing bomblets easily penetrated German armor. During the Battle of Kursk, the Stromoviks dropped the PTABs from altitudes of over 320 feet, with a damage zone that ranged from 50 to 230 feet. According to Soviet sources, over 70 enemy tanks from the 9th Panzer Division were destroyed by Stromoviks in just 20 minutes. Moreover, General V. Ryazanov employed mass attacks on aircraft with the Circle of Death, or Wheel of Death, tactic, forming defensive circles with 8 to 12 models. One fighter at a time could leave the circle to strike its targets and then head back to the formation to avoid being shot down by other Luftwaffe fighters. Overall, 
the Soviet Air Force claimed to have destroyed more than 250 German Panzers during the skirmishes at Kursk. Heroes of the Soviet Union Several Stromovic IL-2 pilots became heroes of the Soviet Union due to their war exploits. Such was the case of Lieutenant Colonel Nelson Stepyan, who flew over 240 combat sorties and destroyed over 70 tanks, 500 armored vehicles, and 20 aircraft. Soviet Commander Leonid Beta also made a name for himself after assaulting Sapun Hill near Sevastopol with his squadron of Stromovics. Beta and his men flew just 20 feet above the ground to hide from German anti-aircraft guns. They then approached enemy emplacements and ships to destroy them with their bomb load. And Senior Lieutenant Anna Yegorowa became an icon after flying more than 240 missions and earning the Gold Star of the USSR. Despite its effectiveness, Stromovic losses were extremely high during the war. Of the 36,000 produced, over 15,000 were lost at the hands of the Germans. The surviving hunchbacks were eventually supplied to countries that joined the USSR during the post-war, but it was quickly phased out with the introduction of Soviet jet aircraft. The legacy of this Russian ground attack aircraft lives on today with the Sukhoi Su-25 Frogfoot, the answer to the American A-10 Thunderbolt II. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos, which we publish regularly. Stay tuned.